All right, first let's look at the parts of a right triangle, okay? Uh, and that's the only time that the Pythagorean theorem is going to work for you, just for right triangles, okay? Here, we state that the right triangle obviously has 90 degrees, okay? Here you have a leg, a leg, and the side that is opposite of the 90 degrees, now that's your hypotenuse. So here, notice that these are both legs. It actually doesn't matter if you put A on this side and B on this side. Okay, the most important part is that you know that your hypotenuse, usually, denote, uh, usually denoted by C, is opposite of the 90 degrees. This is the famous Pythagorean theorem. Let me show you a quick proof as to why we use this and why this works. All right, we start off with a square. Okay, don't look at the one that's inside just yet. Look at the outside square. Okay, I know it looks pretty bad. I can't draw very well. Sorry. So, let's look at what we have. A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B. So, if we want to say the length of this side, we would say that this is the length A up to here and B. So, A plus B. And likewise, for the leg in the bottom, A plus B. Now, if I wanted to get the area of my big square, I would say A plus B times A plus B. In other words, A plus B squared. Now, what I did to get these sides, my inner square, is that I cut the outside square in half and I connected it to the other half. So, this length of C is actually the same as this length of C, C, C. So if I wanted to get the area of my inner square in here, I would just do C times C. So this would be C squared. So I have the inside right now. Well, what about, what about my little triangles out here that I just made? Well, to get the area of a triangle, you do half A times B, half AB. Here I have another one, half AB, half AB, and half AB. That means that if I add all of these up, it should be the same as A plus B squared. Remember, A plus B squared was the whole thing. So this one's telling me the whole thing. And here, all I did is that I split it up into different pieces. But if I add all those pieces together, it should be equal to this. Okay, let me erase this so we can work it out. All right, let's, leave, let's see what we have. A plus B squared, remember, that was the whole thing. And now here are my individual pieces. Remember, I have four little triangles. So that's where this comes from. Half AB plus half AB plus half AB plus half AB. And then I had that inner square, so plus C squared. Okay, let's go ahead and simplify this and see what happens. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and work this out. This ends up being A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. That's just the left side. Okay, I still have the right side. Let's see. So that's equal to, let me get a different color. Let's see. Half plus a half, that's a whole. So it's not half AB anymore, it's just AB. Plus, well look, I have another half and a half, so half and a half is still a whole. AB, and here's C squared. It doesn't combine with anything, so I just leave it alone. Well, let's see, I don't have anything going on here but I see that I can't combine these, so let's do that. A squared plus 2AB plus B squared equals a whole plus a whole. I got 2AB. 2AB plus C squared. Now if you notice, I have 2AB, 2AB. I can get rid of that with my calculation rules, so let's minus 2AB, minus 2AB, 
Well, notice that it's gone from here, and it's also gone from here. All I have left over is a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. And there we have a proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and put it to use. Here I have a triangle, and they gave me two legs. They told me one the leg is three, the other leg is four, but I don't know the hypotenuse. So I'll be using my Pythagorean theorem. Okay, all I have to do now is just go ahead and substitute. Like I said, it doesn't matter which one you choose for A or B. As long as C, you always keep it as the hypotenuse, opposite of the right angle. So, let me just choose the 3 for A. So, 3 squared plus 4 squared is equal to C squared. Okay, 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16, equals to C squared. 9 plus 16 is 25 is equal to c squared, but you don't want c squared, okay? you just want c. In order to get rid of a square, you need to do the opposite. The opposite of squaring is a square root. So, square root of this side, whatever you do to one side, you go ahead and do it to the other. So, square root of 25. That means that c is equal to the square root of 25. I know what that is, that's five. So my final answer is five. All right, what about this one? Here, I'm missing the A instead. Same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and substitute. A squared plus 12 has to be my B, okay? 13 has to be C, remember, because that's your hypotenuse, it's opposite of the right angle. So 12 squared is equal to 13 squared. A squared plus 144 is equal to 169. In this case, I got something extra to do. I got to move that 144 over. So, minus 144, minus 144. I didn't touch a squared, so I'll bring it down. a squared is equal to 5, 25. Same thing. I don't want a squared. I just want a. So I'll take the square root. Square root, square root. A is equal to five. Okay, there you go. All right, here they're asking us to verify if the triangle is a right triangle. So they gave us the three numbers. All we have to do is substitute and see if both sides are equal. So it's still a squared plus b squared equal to c squared. Six squared plus 8 squared equals to 10 squared. Okay, 36 plus 64 equals to 100. Okay, when we add these up, we see that 100 is equal to 100. Since this is true, that means that my uh, the length that they gave me is for a right triangle, and this is a right triangle. Alright, next time we'll be looking at the laws of exponents. See you next time.